Hey guys, welcome to another episode of Ask the Misfits. We have a very special, special episode for you guys this week. We are on the road in Louisville. Is that how you say it? I don't know. Louisville, Kentucky. Close. Uh, just before a camp, I'm Seth. With us today, we have Dex Hopkins, Kenzie Riley, and Cody Mooney. You guys have already asked a bunch of questions online. You knew this was coming, so we have a long list of stuff we're going to get through. We're going to crush as many of these questions as we can across 20 minutes. Uh, we'll start with a couple of real quick housekeeping questions you guys asked. We'll fire through them and then we'll get to the real show here. Uh, Atomic Tron asks, in regards to remote coaching, how do you figure out which coach gets assigned to which athlete? And with us, it's pretty simple. We first look to see who would be the best fit um, for the coach. And also it's about availability too. It, it is in demand. So some coaches are full up for an entire season before the season even starts. We do our best to accommodate people. Dex has been picking on people left and right. We've heard great things about Dex as a remote coach, so. It's a, uh, yeah, it's fun to have a small group, so this can be kind of an intimate experience too, and you can build your little community inside the, you know, with your, your group, but plus the blog too, so that's been cool. Been a fun experience so Yeah, far. yeah, cool. We love it. The Meat Hang Gang, shout them out. They'll be here this weekend. That's our. Uh, the Meat Hang Gang. That's our, Meat Hangers Anonymous. We won't, we won't get into that yet. We'll, <laughs> no, we'll, we'll, we'll move on from there. Uh, good for you, CrossFit. China Cho's new gym, GFY CrossFit, asks, when and where is open prep camp? Sounds like we're going to be going to Iceland for open prep camp. So things oh, are a little yes. different this year. Yes. Um, that's likely where we'll be. Uh, there's going to be probably a new camp after uh, open prep that'll be open to everybody in the States and we'll announce details on that soon. DJ George, Georgette Securius. I didn't say that right. That's, a good That's who it is. Uh, not related to camp, but was thinking about trying to add a weakness template into the training cycle. Which movements out of the template will not, will we not be seeing as much in this cycle? Example, running gymnastics, oily lifts. You're always going to see all the movements as we get closer and closer to the open season, competition season. Things get blended more and more uh, closely together, so there's less separation of these things. Uh, you're going to have to decide what you need to add to your program uh, as competition season gets closer. You're going to triage it. You're always going to see all the things that you just mentioned in there. So if there's something that's a glaring weakness, it doesn't matter uh, what we're going to see less of. You're not going to see really less of any of those things. You're just going to see them blended together more. So you're going to have to find out what it is you need to add, add it in, pull out the things you don't need to train as much. It, it is that simple to explain, but it's a lot more complicated to execute. So that's that. Cody, are you ready? We've ready. picked out three questions for you that you're going to address. Okay. Um, all right. I think most people are concerned with your shoulder. Everyone heard about your shoulder. So first question, um, Ashley Hubbard asks, Cody, what have you been doing for training recently to rehab your shoulder? Um, what happened to your shoulder, first of all? So I tore my labrum. Uh, I tore my labrum probably a year and a half ago in a men's baseball league and then re-injured it this year right after the open in between regionals. Uh, got it fixed about, I think I'm going on seven weeks now post-surgery. Um, it's healing up really well. I see a doctor at Sport and Spine, Dr. Green, in, uh, in Boston. He works, he, the office I go to is one in Back Bay, uh, back across the Back Bay. And I've just been doing a lot of uh, small things now. I can still do CrossFit. I was always able to ride the bike, um, rowing took a little while, stuff like that. I still haven't hung from a bar yet. Uh, snatches, haven't done that, but. I think you're getting close? I am, yeah. So I do this, it's called uh, Arc Wave, and it's like a 20 session progression, and I'm on 15. Okay. So after, once I get to 20, I'm gonna start really trying to introduce things back into it. Does it hurt? Um, no, it's still, it doesn't hurt, it's just still very, it's weird because Everything was, I mean, I just compensated for so long. Like my pec and my bicep tendon just were acting as my labrum. So everything is still very tight, but it's getting a lot better, so which is nice. The Ms. K is from France. You must have met him while you were over there. <laughs> must have. Follow up question on that. How do you feel in regards to the 2018 season with your shoulder? Are you ready? Um, will you yeah. be ready? Yeah, I will be, for sure. I mean, I've been able to still do a lot of training, which is nice. Um, yeah, it sucks. I haven't done that many gymnastics. I mean, I don't think I've done a muscle up since the games, but it is what it is, and I think I'll, I'll be ready when the time comes. The cool thing to watch, though, is, like, it hadn't stopped. Like, a lot of people let it swamp the whole season, like, are coming up, 
and I don't think you skipped a beat at all. Like working around stuff is real. Like has that been super? Oh, hard? for sure. I mean, I was on a in spin classes oh. at Lifetime Athletics with stitches in my arm four days after my surgery. Not recommended. I'm would sure. You, would, you, would you be Catherine Lewis in a spin cycle class? Soul cycle is that what she gets? Soul to? cycle. Uh, Cat challenge issue. I love it. Yeah, it's fun. <laughs> All right, we're moving on. The last question was a, a silly one, but he'll have his chance later on. So, uh, Kenzie, we're going to move to you. Oh. It's from Roy. This guy named Roy. He won't leave us alone. Stalker. He has a few questions. <laughs> I don't know who this Roy is, but the question is, <clears throat> if Moo, the cat, is being an asshole, can I keep her in the garage tonight? And do you miss Imam? Is that your dog? So, if the cat's being an asshole, can she be in the garage while you're gone, and do you miss your dog? I named my dog after CrossFit. Yeah, that's a real thing. I'm not surprised. Everybody thought that was She's the weirdest decision. dog ever. She's not. She's very sweet. So, my husband thinks that I play favorites and that I like our dog more than our cat, which I do because the <laughs> dog does not climb the Christmas tree. The dog does not claw things up with her claws, and she doesn't really walk on me in the middle of the night. So, therefore, the cat deserves to go in dogs the garage not, sometimes. Dogs not okay. her. So, yes. But also, permission granted. Oh, you gotta take care of him, please. <laughs> please. Feed Don't him forget to feed him. him. Yeah. Feed him old man. He's pretty good at that. He's good. Ashley Harbour just wants to say that she loves you and Mike. Oh, yeah. So, I, that's a question I'm using. I mean, is that a question? A I don't no, think it's not. a question. It's clearly not it, a question. It, it, it shouldn't ever be a question. <laughs> no one should ever question if they love me or Mike. So we just let Boy. Ashley give the shout out on Ask the Misfits. She loves you and Mike. That's great. Thanks, Ashley. Calling in the radio. Last question. You can take this wherever you want. Um, strong cup of Joe. Hard pass. Okay. All right. We're skipping it. You just just say it, and we'll just let it be. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Strong cup of Joe asks, can you explain why Jordan Cook can't look you in the eyes anymore? Uh, and if you don't answer, Dex is supposed to answer. But I think a strong pass by both you guys, and just a smile. Let's. I'm just gonna. Say, I'll just say this. Dance. Team Misfit is very. We're just. We're just a close. Bunch. We're just a close we have to bunch. share hotel rooms a lot, and like we travel together, and just put ourselves in weird situations. It's not nothing my fault. super. Inter- nothing inappropriate. It, no. Just awkwardness <laughs> can occur. Nothing I'm, I'm a super comfortable person. I don't yeah. get embarrassed. Nothing inappropriate. There are such a thing as no eye contact moments. And of course. Jordan yeah. Jordan Cook's a pro at them. We'll yes. Say that. Pro no eye contact, just, man. Just making things awkward. Thanks, Jordan. Can That's you light that up for me? Thanks, nice you. Thing. Dex, we're going to jump right over to you. Ashley Hubbard, again, she just had questions for all you guys. Uh, this is the big question. This is the only real question. The rest of hey, they're all so, real questions. So, yeah, it's true. What are your plans for regionals slash games this year with the new team format? How's that uh, changed this for you? So, last year was kind of our last hurrah. We recruited Mel Doss, had uh, Dalton Perez. And, and had a cool year. Doss, unfortunately, had like a crazy injury, um, really which she's bounced back from. Um, and she looked great. We've done a competition since then, just for fun. We ended up winning. Um, but this year, man, uh, Erica uh, Spitz, one of my favorite people in the world, great athlete, um, real good kind of anchor for our girls, moved to Philly to be with her husband. Um, Doss, I don't know what her plans are, obviously still on the road to recovery and recovering a lot of that capacity. Um, so just kind of out of not having the, the pieces to put together right now. I think I'm going individual, uh, which I'm excited. I haven't noticed Whoa, since 2014. there's the announcement right there. Yeah, the announcement. <laughs> Official. <laughs> yeah, but we, I don't know, man. I, when I met you guys, we were doing individual. Me and Cam got straight yeah. every day, and, like, the most fun I had, or one of the most fun times I had was when we had just had a squad at South Central at Dirty Freeman Coliseum, and uh, it was a fun, fun time on the boardwalk when Ted almost killed that guy. <laughs> so... Uh, it'll be a good time, man. So I'm planning to go Indy. Um, that's what I'm training for. So and you know, we drank a bunch of champagne things. outside the Seven Eleven on the ton of champagne. On the river walk. Yeah, yeah. We drank a lot. Yeah, we did like a million Irish car, car bombs. Yeah. I've never done one before. He'll take three. <laughs> Thanks, Seth. That's a good good night. All right, uh, I'll throw this out there too. Another strong cup of Joe question for you. How much do you get paid to make appearances for Jared Stevens? He doesn't feel like showing up. Uh, when they need a taller stunt double. Or, uh, way better looking. Uh, I wouldn't say that. Way better looking. Wow. Way more charming. Wait, he's way better looking? Oh, yeah. Wow. Okay. We're sick of that. Wow. We, uh, <laughs> dude, I, we actually like chatted up. Like, he's a super nice guy. But, and somebody accidentally tagged me in a picture of him at the games like two weeks oh, ago. Oh, I'm sure. And I tagged him in it. We're sick of that shit. Okay, we're our own people. <laughs> all right. So, we got a lot of questions for the last 10 minutes, and these are aimed at all you guys. 
Um, let's dive right into them. So be right to the point. You can joke around, but be direct. We're going to try to cover as many of these as possible. Recovery. Talking recovery. Misfit.Matthew asks, I'm not huge on taking supplements outside of my uh, protein and fish oil. What are three or four things? How about one thing each? You guys think are important uh, for keeping up the intensity of training or recovery? A supplement you take that you'd recommend? Uh, magnesium. I mean, personally, not to like necessarily plug, but Nova 3 Max Adrenal, like, I've been taking that for like two years just to keep my hormones like in check. Uh, so I'm kind of on the same road. Like, I take less things than I've taken ever now. Like, I used to do creatine and all that stuff, but like, I started sleeping more. And I already checked that off. But like, the magnesium stuff at night, you take calm or whatever it is. Yeah. yeah. Natural calm. So I take natural calm before I sleep, and that's Drew's fault. Uh, it smells like calm in here. <laughs> uh, but I take that, man. It helps me sleep better. And, and cool. I feel like a direct correlation between how I feel training the next day or recovery is linked to how much and the quality I'm sleeping. So more follow-ups to that topic. Uh, nice Scott asks, even though he already knows sleeping is probably the top recovery aid, what else do you guys find to be in help of recovery from a tough week of training? Any, any activity that you do? <clears throat> when I make sure I cool down and, and open up post-training, I feel better going in the next day. Uh, if I don't noticeably tell, I feel like garbage joint and muscle-wise. Yeah, I'm big on that. I don't stretch and do like too much of like I warm up and whatnot and like try to break a sweat, but cooling down big time after and stretching, I definitely notice it the next day a lot more. I think we actually did the same thing today, didn't we? Yeah. Yeah. Activate before. Yeah. And swimming. I mean, I, even on rest days, if I take a straight up rest day, I mean, most days I try to, you know, rest as much as I can, but I have to do something. I have to break a little bit of sweat, stretch, and then I'm good. If I do that, I feel a lot better I'm, the other days trying to train, which is nice. Okay. I have to say eating enough food. Make, I mean, mm. like, especially yep. when I travel, I notice, like, I don't think I ate enough food yesterday. And I feel like I feel it today because I was caught up traveling. So, yeah. So you feel like you're in a deficit today? Is that what you're saying? I feel like I didn't set myself up for feeling strong today because I didn't eat enough yesterday. I didn't mm. recover. Gotcha. And, it's, and traveling is, like, stress on, more stress on your body than you think. And, like, oh, adapting yes. to a new environment, sleeping in a different bed. So not just in your routine, but especially when I travel, I notice it. Yeah, the routine uh, sucks. Getting out of that. So we have a question from uh, Mahmoud El Zayat, who says he's been following the programming um, since the beginning of last season and has a lot of improvement, but he's got big goals, aims to make the games the next few years, and he believes he needs to be on a faster uh, rate of improvement. Um, says he's kind of on the lower range right now of, of average athletes. He is adding in accessory strength stuff for himself on top of the Miss Athletics programming to try to expedite this uh, growth in his athletics and he thinks he may need to recover and eat more but he thinks it's too much overall what do you guys think of a scenario like that someone who's trying to add in to speed up their intensity growth? I mean if you think if you look at the open you look at I mean even regionals regionals is two workouts a day the opens one workout a week it's it's learning to hit pieces of intensity like warming up correctly getting your heart rate spiked, letting it calm down and like learning to really, really hit pieces with a hundred percent instead of being like, well, I got this piece to do, but I got three more after. So if I give half to this piece, then I'll be able to finish my other pieces. Like, so would you sum it up with sort of saying that choosing the correct pieces is more important than yes. trying to do all the pieces and, and doing the correct exactly. pieces with as much effort as you can put into them? Exactly. Is it, that, is it probably yeah. that simple? I agree. Mine's, um, especially from a coach standpoint, like with remote athletes, more is not always better like the quality right. of what you're doing and that's not just like hitting totally. is awesome but if you move well if you're prepping cooling down and all that stuff and you've organized all the things outside of the gym to kind of work towards all those goals you have then that's kind of how you line yourself up for that uh, i would just like to say if strength and if strength is something that he specific because he says he's adding strength if that's what he needs to improve on if that's his biggest deficit across you know all of his crossfit skills doing like a shit ton of netcon and other stuff with strength, I don't think you're going to get that much stronger. If you need to focus on strength, do you think you just need to focus on strength and get stronger? Like, is it? To can, a you, point, can you put those two things together? To a point, I would totally agree with that. You can absolutely get stronger while doing metcons, in my opinion. But it takes a long time, so he's trying to rush the process. It's not. It's like can't. It's like a wash. It, it could. It could be. But what? What I think would happen in that situation is, um, you would basically. I don't know if you call it a wash, but. <sighs> 
You make a plan it's, with the timeline. Yeah, that stuff. Be, yeah. If, if you stop doing metcons, like not you, entirely. I'm no, not saying. entirely. But CrossFit is based on metcons, right? Yeah, it's based on yeah, conditioning. Absolutely. So, so, and he's talking about strength being a weakness compared to where he's at, and he's putting himself at the lower end average of athletes, <clears> which means that his conditioning is also in the lower end average of athletes. Yeah, and if that's the most important part, strength. Then gotcha. You do need it. Gotcha. You do need it. But I mean, look at me. Like, you just have to be medium at everything. Not just try and be medium. Strong whatsoever. I will get outlifted nine out of ten times. Just Compared to the high like level where yeah. you're at. Yes. Yeah, but like, there's one usually one lift at regionals. Right. Yeah. There's maybe a lift in the open. Right. Like, you know what I mean? Like, you don't get there it's from right. that. Skills Being and strong. conditioning. It's skills and conditioning. And that's like the hardest pill for me to swallow because when I came in, like I was big, heavy, strong dude, and he's right. There's one event. To where the strength will, will help you most times. Um, so you do gotta have it, but yeah, I, you gotta I, have it. To I, yeah, never. You can prioritize it, like make it a bias, but you still have to value exactly. conditioning equal GPP. or more always. Yep. Let's move to the topic of competition and training. Um, we're gonna lump them in together. Ryan Teddy Bear Tough. Wow, Ryan Teddy Bear Tough says, "Any tips on competition prep? For example, how many times would you run through known workouts?" You know, what does training look like a week out or a couple days before the competition itself? <clears throat> I mean, if you know the workouts, definitely do them. I'm big on that. I mean, it's just kind of stupid if you don't. Uh, but I think at regionals, I ran through, I, I don't know, I knew them two weeks in advance, whatever. I was the first week and I ran through it once, maybe twice on some events that I wasn't really kind of sure about. And leading up was a... I don't like to really change my schedule too much. You know, I was still working out, stuff like that. The day before, I usually rest two days before, then the day before I am biking, rowing, getting my heart rate up, Definitely. something like that, stretching, feeling good, and then competing the next day. I had the third week regionals this year, so I did every workout at least three times, mm -hmm. I feel like. Do you think that um, was uh, beneficial or damaging or uh, right in the middle? I think beneficial. Mentally, probably less beneficial, sure. but physically, probably more beneficial. But um, but since then, because the games is all like unknown, I just kind of like got out of like the, the habit of practicing, just being ready to like do it. And then last weekend, I didn't test any of those workouts last weekend, and we got up there, and I think I heard Travis say. I gotta get back to testing workouts. That was a bad idea not yeah. to test workouts. After you so. tried telling me he wasn't gonna test any this season. That's what yeah. he told me. Yeah. So if you change plan. Like, knucklehead. Yeah, my thing if, if somebody gives you the answers to the test, I think it's crazy not to practice. Yeah. But I also think you can beat that drum to death like we saw this year with a lot of weird injuries. I don't think those are acute at all. I think it's very cumulative. Sure. I think you practice, gain the experience, and you know the pieces you need to put together, and you can do that in training through not beating yourself to death. Like uh, what was it, the ring dip workout where everybody's blowing their stuff out? You don't have to do that workout a million times. You can do right. pieces of it. Like, you know where the deficiency is. So put those pieces together to work toward the whole after you've experienced it. I like that. Lyoder05 asks, if building an engine is of top priority, what do you recommend doing if you only have one hour a day to train? 50 cows on the bike for time. <laughs> Every day? <laughs> Easy. Done. Especially yeah. if you have a simple tip pounds. for that? One hour a day? Like I said, I mean, you look at what you have and... You just you hit it as hard as you can. You're not thinking about other things. If it's a Metcon, it's, you know, it is what it is. And you just go as, as hard as you can. You give everything you have. I just think that there's no secret answer to it. You know, there's no mm -hmm. machine that's like, all right, if you just do this one machine, you'll be right. good at all of it. You know, it's just learning that intensity equals results. And that's what I have to do to be able to get where I want to be. One, one tip I'd throw in for something like that is, especially if they're kind of putting lifting on the back burner, is put your lifts against the clock. So worry about volume of moving the bar for reps at percentages versus trying to go super heavy with it. Make, make exactly. your lift the Metcon as well. And exactly. I think you can get more that's out of it that way. Oh, that's for sure. Yeah. Well, that's how like Imams got so popular when everybody saw Rich doing, you know, five by five on the minute, whatever. Yeah. And then you're getting a little bit of both. And you build confidence for when you're not that out of breath. So that's important, I like that. Uh, we're gonna tie two questions together. One's from Logie Bear and one's from Chris Mortimer. I'm gonna kind of combine the two. Uh, one wants to know how to get better at bike sprints, and on the other <laughs> side of that, someone's asking how to go to the dark place in bitch work. So, how do you get better? Fucking bike sprints. How do you get better? More fucking bike sprints. Yeah, be be heavier. Yeah. Uh, no, the more time I spend on it, like 
And the more time we spend in anything that's bitch work or bitch gymnastics or whatever, like the, the experience you get is you gain the confidence to know when you're going to fail and when you're not. You're not going to fail a bike sprint. And the speed will change and, and you know, 100% intensity, like first sprint may be that 1400 plus whatever watts and then the 100% for whatever may be down. But you learning to stay there and deal with it that you're not going to die and the body will do what you tell it to do is, is important. So to so hold on to it. The dark places, and, and that kind of goes with the dark place, right? So yeah. it's, a, it's a mentality. It's, yeah. a, it's a willingness. It's, it like be an, okay it's a with desire it. to go there yeah. as opposed to like, I'm going there. How do I deal with it? It's like, I want to go there. If when you talk to a bunch of people that have, like, have been there, like been heartbroken by it, bounced back, been there, went on a team, went by herself, and the, the resounding thing is, hey, intensity, like ride the lightning. And I, I coach people like this in affiliates too. And they're like, well, I need to go heavier. No, you don't. Go faster. Like, be really okay with being really uncomfortable, and that pays dividends when the season comes around, when it's the open, and you need to hold on for five, whatever more reps, so. You feel it happening. Mm -hmm. Like, the dark the, the, the dark place, like, you feel it, like, this this is starting to hurt, this is getting really bad, and you know what's happening, you just have to, to do it anyways. That's the you got last word. It's the last question, you got last word. <laughs> I mean, yeah, just what she said, it's, it's between your ears. It's you make the decision to, you know, cut it short, or just, put down your head and say screw this I'm just gonna do it you know that last 20 cows can take you two minutes or take you 20 can take faster, two minutes faster you, you do it it's it's done. Done. <laughs> yeah. oh this will be a nice nice two minute wrap <laughs> alright well secrets. that's our time cap so right. guys thanks for tuning in thanks for all the questions uh, we'll try to hit some of the other ones we didn't get in the next episode so uh, until next time see you guys later hey. see ya I miss you Joe I miss you Joe <laughs>